welcome everybody to episode six of the Winter Clan Roundtable podcast with me, your host, Sami Vodka. As always, I bring guests with me today to talk about this time around our games of the year. It's going to be three different topics. I'll explain what we're going to do here today, but ultimately we'll be talking about some of the games that mattered the most to us this year, uh, left an impression on us, and we just had more fun playing this year. And we'll also talk a a little bit about our most anticipated games of 2023 as well. Uh, once we're wrapping up the episode today. But to kick us off, as always, I'm going to introduce our wonderful guests. To kick us off, Malak, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you. Malak, how's that holiday season coming around for you? You got any Christmas plans? Is is it cold wherever you are? Yeah, that Christmas sweater. Yeah. Uh, I've got a sweater. Um, That's (laughs) about it for the Christmas uh, with me. Uh, I'm not big on the holidays, but yes, it's snowing outside. Oh, so that's nice. I, I don't like oh, that's it. Awesome. But hey, it's snowing. So well, I've been informed something. where where I, I'm I'm living now in Ohio, and apparently this weekend it's going to be eight degrees Fahrenheit. I've been living in the U.S. for ten years. I still don't know Fahrenheit, but I've been informed that's really fucking cold. So I'm bracing for that. So hopefully it's a little bit uh, cozier wherever you are, Malak. Okay. It's a bit cozier than uh, 8 degrees <laughs> far high here, yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Bearded, welcome back. Hope everything's hey. good with you. Glad to have you back in the podcast. Yeah, man, good to be back. And it is a balmy 53 degrees Fahrenheit where I'm at. So um, much, much warmer. And, uh, that sounds no nice. Chance of, at all, no chance at all of us getting any snow. So uh, I'm jealous of any of y'all who get snow. Uh, is Gulf living on the Gulf Coast? You just don't see that. There you go, Bearded. Have you have you written to Santa already? Do you have any uh, Santa requests, gaming wise, for for Christmas? Uh, I am I'm hoping to get uh, Pokemon Scarlet, and I've been playing my son's. I gave my son Violet mostly so I could play his game when he wasn't playing. <laughs> there you go. And I now, but now I know he's getting into it too much. He's nine years old and he's into it too much. So now I like, I barely get any time to play on it. So I got to get my, get my own. I think I'm going to be getting that for Christmas, but uh, yeah. Fantastic. And last but not least, we got free back with us on the podcast. How's it going? Nice flannel. You got a nice flannel vest combo like there. Yeah. When are we yeah. getting our winter flannels, you know, winter <laughs> clan flannels. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll get right on that. Uh, I mean, actually, 2023, we're going to have some new items to the, added to the store, but flannel's not one of them, and okay. also no body pillows, people. No. Um, I was about to ask. No, I, 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 was, to ask. I was preemptive for anybody else who's going to, yeah. Okay. No, but uh, there's going to be some stuff in there, like uh, there's going to be some stuff for hands. So that, that little blank icon, which has been sitting there for the whole year, is going to actually, it's going to be something. I but, don't know uh, to do yeah. with my hands. That's fantastic. Yeah, we we need to fill yeah. in that little inventory slot, right? Uh, with our with that's our gloves, exactly what I'm talking about. I know it annoys it. some people. So yeah. completionists yeah. out there. There's there's a lot of us in the winter community. So so that makes sense. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we got we got our guests rounded up here. So everyone, let me talk to you a little bit about how the episode is going to work today. It's going to be a little bit different. Fortunately, we won't be fielding any questions and emails from the community this time around, just because we got a lot to cover today, but we'll still be taking your questions on Discord, on email. Uh, But today we're going to start off with our first round. We're going to be talking about our personal games of the year, top three games of the year. What we're going to do is we're going to start off with a round where everyone's going to talk about their third place game of the year. So the idea is everyone can talk about what it is, why they liked it, why it left a mark on them. And then we'll just keep doing, we're going to keep going around until we have everyone's top uh, top two and top number one game of the year. doesn't have to be necessarily a game supported in the winter community. Uh, it can just be single player, multiplayer, whatever, whatever was, was important, whatever we had the most fun playing. So to kick us off, we'll start off with Malak, since you're on the top left corner of my screen, Malak, okay. tell us your top three, well, your third place game of the year for 2022 and why. So that would be Overwatch 2. Uh, the game's not awesome. Uh, it, at first, it felt like a update to Overwatch 1. But the more I play it, the more different it feels. Um, I've spent way too much time on that game. I have upwards of a uh, thousand hours. Did you complete the battle pass? Your in-game time. Oh, wow. I've, com- I've completed so many battle passes. Uh, many times over, actually. And yeah, that would be Overwatch 2. 
I had a lot of fun playing Overwatch 2, but I will say, to me, it felt more like a update, you know, like a new season of Overwatch 1 with new characters mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But I had I had a great time, and we had our Overwatch uh, leadership episode, Malak, you're actually in it. And the big difference to me from Overwatch 1 to Overwatch 2 is that when Overwatch 1 came out, I wasn't in winter. When Overwatch 2 came out, I was. And it was it's just been amazing playing with the community. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, just cool folks to hang around with and learn. They've actually been really good at kind of teaching me the ropes of the game. Oh, yeah. Even you, uh, walking me through the different roles and how to not be a complete noob, even though I still am one <laughs> when I play the game. The community does make a huge difference, honestly. Uh, the main reason... Even a, a leadership place here is the community itself. Like the game is not awesome, but the community sure is. Yeah, it's just a fun game to jump in with a few friends and not get super toxic. Because when Overwatch One, I already talked about this the other uh, uh, other episode, but when Overwatch One came out, I would get so toxic when we lost. I've just grown as a person. <laughs> uh, so but that's great. All right, Bearded, you're up. Number three game wow. of the year for you. I think my number three is going to be um, Horizon Forbidden West. Um, it's just, I, I actually have not played these, and I kind of told Tommy before we got into this that I've not played a lot of the new <laughs> games. But, um, man, I love the original Horizon, and I have watched, since I couldn't play Forbidden West, I have watched every bit of the gameplay on YouTube and followed it, and it's still, it's just a beautiful game. But uh, that's my number three. I got to interject here. Uh, so I got that free with my PlayStation 5. I'm stuck at like the beginner level. Uh, <laughs> I didn't play the original. And so I was playing this one. I was like, I'm not going to read any tutorials, whatever. And I'm trying to like go in this, I don't know, jungly area or whatever. I don't know where to go. So like, I, and yeah, so I'm stuck. So that game can die. No. Uh, <laughs> so that's your number one game of the year free? Absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've never played Forbidden West. I've played whatever what's the name of horizon what i mean what's the name of the first one i, I even forget is it zero dawn? dawn zero dawn yeah, yeah. yeah. Zero zero dawn, dawn. yeah. it's good i mean it looks gorgeous i can't argue with that but it's just another one of those to me you know it's like a map a lot of icons you go there you can the and the enemies are cool because they're the the transformers-esque dinosaurs which yeah. is pretty hard to beat from a coolness factor but you know you go up to on the like long neck dinosaur and scope it out and I don't know. It just it didn't it didn't stick with me for a long time. But I heard the story actually goes places in the first one. I don't know if it goes places in the second one. So, well, I, what gets me about the Horizon games, both of them, is just like not many games get archery and, and the bow play right. Like everything's so gun focused that whenever they throw in a bow in a game, it's always hit or miss. But when I'm playing horizon and i'm i mean because your primary weapon is a bow it they just did it right and it makes me want to go and not and play with a bow on other games and then i go to those other games and i can't do it near as well as i can in horizon and so like it's just a fun game man it's a good especially if you put the settings on low like you could put it on story mode for the difficulty and you just go and chill and vibe through the whole story, and it's it's nice. Yeah, I'll agree with you. I think one, some of my favorite moments playing the first one is, is the gameplay. I, like the most badass moments I felt is when you're sliding with alloy and it goes into slow mo and you shoot like an arrow on the mm-hmm. kneecap of a dinosaur and it falls over. Like that, that did feel really good. But nice, yeah. I'll probably finish uh, the first one at some point. I'm the kind of person that I start a game and then something happens like IRL that takes me out out of it for a little bit. But I always usually come back and and beat those games and even platinum them. So that's definitely on my list to to get ahead of at some point. Uh, Forbidden West might take a little bit longer, maybe more of a 2025 game, but we'll see. Slow and steady wins the race. Yeah. All right, Free, your turn. Hit us. So I, I have to caveat this. Is this games that only came out in 2022? So Cause it's I a, think it probably should be right. It sounds like, but I didn't remember forbidden West actually. Um, did it come out this year? Or was it, it came out, out this in, year. Okay. Dead. Yeah. yeah. I thought I really I, had the I was say, you got me, you got me all wrong. I was like, oh, I was crap, like I'm wait a minute. Well, Jedi I mean, mind games by free. Just because so he didn't just... like forbidden West. He's like, mm, 
mm, are you sure? Technically, it didn't come out this year. Uh, but you know what? It's it, it's a very it, it can be a game that got an update in 2023, got a new mode, got DLC, came out of early access. We're we're playing pretty fast and loose with the definition. Well, yeah, of, that's and that's where it gets tricky because like uh, for all of the uh, the upgraded stuff, I, you want to be like Witcher three, um, which I feel like would be totally cheating because I mean yes, Witcher three, the remake, whatever with the Unreal Five engine, uh, I think it's the Unreal Five engine. Um, I actually haven't touched it, but like I, dude, it's good. Yeah, I, I just, I'm sure it's spectacular. It's really good. I heard it's actually shit, shat the bed on PC. I'm playing on the PS5, uh, and it's phenomenal. Hmm. It's really, really good. I've been debating on checking that out because I got stuck. I would I, that would definitely not be my third, <laughs> but and, and the fact that I haven't actually played it yet this year, um, but I got stuck trying to get all the the trophy hunter award stuff or whatever. I got stuck beating everything on the hardest difficulty, but I was like I'm like half a little thing away from hitting the next level, and that next level cap is like 30 or whatever it is. I, I don't know. It's been a couple of years, but there's a trophy associated with that. And I'm like, and I didn't want to have to do new game plus, so. Um, yeah, okay, so games this year, top three, and I'll pick my third place one. I'm just going to go, uh, let's see here. I'm going to be like Pokemon Legends, where I caught the <laughs> Tinkle Poo, and I morphed in the Jarja Goo. Oh, no, I did not a big Pokemon you master. so many of our winter members. <laughs> I had to do it. I had to do it. I've never played a Pokemon game of any kind ever, mobile <laughs> playstation pc xbox anything uh no i'm just gonna say nhl i spent a lot of time in nhl 23 um so far it's an incremental update over 22 but it reminds me a lot of nhl 14 which is probably the best one that they ever did um still got some bugs there's menu glitches all over the place um but uh the core gameplay is pretty good and it's fun to play so i'll put that at third say so nhl is probably d- definitely the best hockey game that came out this year so <laughs> well i'll you know let me know when 2k sports or somebody else decides to make hockey games again do it's they just, yeah. do they still did they stop making them I, they stopped I mean, making them oh. i think uh, is it just because they were getting crushed or did they lose a license or what, i, I what think happened for that hockey would have to become relevant again Ooh, but, wow yeah. wow came, I, I think came the, in the hot. issue yeah the issue was that um EA Sports went the more simulation route, so they tried to make it a little bit more realistic. And then EA Sport, or sorry, um, uh, 2K Games went kind of more of the who's your celebrity hockey player, really like Alexander Ovechkin or whoever, you know, Sidney Crosby or, you know, any of the new guys. Um, that's what they did, and they focused more on the flashiness of it. But EA Sports kept all of their existing uh, game modes and whatnot and improved upon them. And I think they just had more stuff to offer. and for the people that that care there are a lot of people who really like if you're in hockey you're really into hockey and those people either played um in real life or whatever in college or in high school or club uh i still play you know beer league uh and those people when they jump on like something like uh you know nhl 23 what they're looking for is something that's close that mimics that with a lot of you know competition and a lot of complexity and i think the flashiness of the 2K game stuff versus the complexity of EA Sports is probably why EA ended up winning out. Yeah, I've never I played a couple matches of NHL back in college, but I I don't think it was this edition. But I remember a few years ago, like people would post in one of the channels uh, where everyone just creates their own player and you play together and you just control that one guy. And I saw Winter like won a little tournament and game through that. And that was pretty cool. Like people just getting together and and playing like that. I play that in yeah. FIFA. I used to a lot back also in college. You just create your player. And that was always fun because it was I, I don't a lot know when, we're, when. Yeah. When are we going to get a FIFA team? Like when are we going to get a I FIFA love group? You. It's been talked about for forever. And uh, actually, it's let me answer that butter. question. We're never getting a FIFA group because <laughs> FIFA is no longer the name of the game. EA lost the rights. So right, it's going to be EAFC. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. maybe they will make a FIFA game. I, FIFA did say they will, but I, I find it hard to believe they'll make a quality It'd game. It'd be like FIFU or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, but, but yeah, and yeah, that's my third. Fantastic. To wrap the the first round, which is the third best game of the year for me, it is maybe a little bit off the left field here. It's a game called Pentiment. It came out on Game Pass. So shout out to oh, Game yeah. Pass because I definitely wouldn't have played that game otherwise. Uh, Pentiment is a very different game. It, it it goes back. It reminds me a lot of the Lucas Arts adve- point and click adventure games like Escape, uh, Escape from Monkey Island, uh, Grim Fandango, and things like that. It's not actually point and click, I guess, because I played it on the controller, so I could 
walk my little dude around. But it's just a very interesting story. It, you're a, you're an artist in like 14th century Bavaria, and you're in this abbey uh, working on your masterpiece in a scriptorium where you know monks are writing texts by hand. And uh, without very minor spoilers to Pentiment, but this visiting noble person comes around and he's murdered in the abbey. And then you, as the visiting artist, you kind of just get uh, caught up in all the mess and you try to investigate what happens. And the game goes to some, it has three acts. Uh, they're very, they, there's, they change a lot. I, I, I don't want to spoil how they change, but they change a lot throughout the three acts. And the story was really good. It's not a super long game. It's probably six, seven ish hours to beat. If you want to get all the achievements, you gotta. There's a lot of options. They impact the story and what happens. Like you can choose who you who you're gonna accuse of being the murderer and things like that. But fantastic game, fantastic writing, uh, fantastic art. Clearly, the people, the the guy who made the writer for the game is the same writer for Fallout New Vegas. So you can see his chops and like, oh, these are branching paths and the characters are very well thought out so just just a great little game very different it's a very reedy it's not a dewy kind of game you're not doing a lot you're reading a lot uh so i know a lot of people uh don't like or don't know how to read it happens but uh <laughs> i can't read or write <laughs> but for those who do like to do that kind of stuff it's uh it's a phenomenal game you All right. just offended so many of our Winter Clan members <laughs> who don't know how to read or write. You got to put that <laughs> meme from King of the Hill. Yeah, <laughs> if, they right. knew, if they knew how to read, they'd be so offended. All right, that's, that wraps up. So, Block with Overwatch 2, Bearded with uh, Horizon Forbidden West, Free with NHL, what, 2022? 20, is it always the year? It's ahead? 23. It's always the year. It starts yeah. the season. Yeah, 23. Um, and myself, Tommy, with Pentiment. And, Block, back to you, your top, your second game of the year. So I haven't actually played it, but God of War Ragnarok, because I've seen way too much of the of this game. Uh, Just spoiling of, yourself with YouTube videos. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, pa loads passive of playing, <laughs> <laughs> watching let's plays and stuff. Um, great gameplay, great story, great memes. Moreover, um, overall, awesome game. Fantastic. I haven't played Ragnarok. It's definitely on my probably two buy list for next year. I platinumed God of War 2018, I think this year, earlier this year, which goes back to the story of how I start games and then eventually finish them. I started it probably like two years ago and only finished it this year. Um, I mean, I love that game. It was a really good action game. I haven't played Ragnarok, but again, I'll probably get around to it at some point. All right, Bearded, you're up next. Uh, mine is, uh, I don't think anyone's going to agree with me, um, but I'm just such a hardcore Pokemon fan that I got to say Scarlet and Violet, man. It has been, it has been so glitchy and like, if you have not, if you've been able to play through the game and not fall through the earth into the abyss, um, then you were lucky, but I've had so much fun and I get into moods about games, like if I'm really into one game, I'm into everything about that game. And so like I've been playing uh, Violet on my, on the switch and which has made me start downloading and doing uh, playing through some like Pokemon Emerald on my phone, on my computer. I'm playing like Coliseum XD Gale Damn. of Darkness. Like, like I'm like, I got like three different, I got Pokemon yellow because I, they said that, uh, the Ash and Pikachu is being retired for the 2023 season. So I was like, Oh no, now I got to go back and play Pokemon yellow edition. So I like got yellow going on there now. So I've got like five different Pokemon games on different emulators going right now that I'm just like playing here and there. Um, and then when I get chance on the switch, I'm back on violet. So like, I'm, I'm all about some Pokemon right at this point in my life, right? now so it's a lot of pokemon <laughs> fantastic i mean that's you you kind of hit the i i haven't played a minute of those games I, I we were actually talking about uh before we even started recording i used to play so much pokemon it's probably one of the most important like gaming uh series from for me growing up but i just i've just been kind of tapped out i actually bought pokemon arceus and thought it was fantastic i like the new formula uh, but I did hear that the glitches were really bad, but if you could look past that, it's actually, it grabbed some of the better things of Arceus and brought it back to mainline mm -hmm. Pokemon and, and was a good time there. But, uh, free anything you might add as our, uh, resident Pokemon specialist. 
<laughs> I mean, you gotta collect all of the that is true. Slinger locks and dungle clocks. That is that is. <laughs> I don't know. On. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know what's really funny is that my mom for um, uh, for Halloween last year, so not you know, a couple months ago, but the previous year, uh, she did, she always, uh, she's an artist and she likes to carve up stuff or make really fancy pumpkins. We always have this, like who did the best pumpkin, uh, you know, thing for everybody comes up and gets, uh, you know, candy and she did a Pokemon and Salazar. Is that right? I don't know. Um, he's got Charizard. like a flaming tape. Maybe Charizard. Just- <laughs> Charizard. <laughs> Charizard. Charizard. I knew I didn't hear yeah, that. Right. Like, that very good. Good. Did Pokemon. Did we say that in 2023? Doesn't like, sound right, does it? <laughs> oh, the world we cut that. It's, it's, cut it's, that. A, it's no, it's uh, it's uh, it's canon in Winter Clan. You got to watch out for those Char. Oh, we're gonna right. have to bleep that one out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Charizard. Maybe it's got a flamey tail, right? Or yeah, something? yeah, yeah. Sure yeah okay, yeah, so sure yeah, yeah, she did one of those, and she ended up winning like the best good-looking pumpkin ever. Um, but uh, yeah, but yeah, I don't. Cultured people actually know what Charizard is. <laughs> Speaking of cultured people, while we're like talking about Charizards and all the variations, I just see Malak grab a little teapot, like pour a little bit of tea there. <laughs> so very, very refined. I like. You gotta it. stay hydrated. But yeah, you know, it's made myself, uh, a wow, teapot that's... of uh, Taiwanese green high mountain tea. Wow. Sponsored by Taiwanese yes. Green yes. Tea. <laughs> Thank you for all the <laughs> – cut the commercials. <laughs> yeah, I have it somewhere. Uh, fantastic. I hate tea, uh, but I respect people. I've tried drinking tea so many times, but I just – Oh, I'm a big tea. I just go back to coffee, coffee every time. I just can't, just can't do it. Just can't do it. I think my mom always gave me tea when I was ill growing up. So now whenever I drink mm. tea, I just associate with be, like being sick. Uh. Mm-hmm. Uh, Only tea time. I like is good Southern sweet tea. That, I, that's how I associate soup. By the way, I don't ever eat soup, but growing up, soup was like something you drank when you were or ate. Yeah, my mom you just thought tea yeah. was a like magic medicine and will fix. And it did yeah. fix a lot of things, so maybe she she had a point there. All right, pre yeah, your top se- your second best game of the year. Ooh, uh, I kind of want to go with Rumbleverse to be honest. No, I did um, not expect it, that. Yeah, it okay, didn't. Yeah. I played it like twice, um, but it was really fun. And what ended up happening is I got really busy doing some other stuff um, for winter that was not gaming related. So uh, I didn't really I haven't returned back to it, but it was really fun, you know, to go ahead and you had a bunch of different characters and mm-hmm. it was just fun. I, the only thing that I kind of wish is I wish it had a longer half life in uh, in winter. It didn't yeah. last very long because I think people were too busy playing different games at the time. And, um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of fun. I would say, go ahead and check it out. Uh, maybe it comes back to life in 2023, but, uh, I try to remember who was the Lieutenant over it when it came out. Does anybody remember? Uh, I didn't even, I'm going to uh, be honest and say, I didn't know put it in the ever. comments, people put in the comments. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I can't remember. I'd have to go back and look, like uh, comments. look at my, sponsored by on that. Taiwanese green. But yeah, no, that, that was <laughs> one of those things though. Rumbleverse was super fun, but it, it was very it fun. Out, it was, it was yeah. just the worst time for it to come out because so many other things were happening and no one had time for an extra little fun game to play right, right now. And right. so, um, but I, I really do. I also hate that that did not make it as a clean game in winter. Um, that would have. Well, I mean, I mean it, it made it. It just didn't make it for very long, right? It just it yeah. got shelved pretty quickly. I, I right. remember the thing I actually remember most about it, aside from the actual gameplay, was um, picking it up, not knowing anything about it, simply because it was mentioned in winter. And I played it the first time very, very late at night, thinking it was going to be some sort of like fall guys knockoff Mm -hmm. and like preparing to absolutely like rage quit throw my controller at the tv from some like you know thing and then it was a completely different game wasn't like that at all and i don't know why i thought that but that's the thing that actually sticks out in my mind mostly uh, about the game aside from the fact that was really fun i've never played it there's uh i listen a lot to this gaming podcast called giant bomb but anyways they said that you could they were talking about Rumbleverse, and they said you could elbow drop on someone else from the top of the building, yeah. and that sounded yeah, pretty yeah. rad. So, yeah, I, I could who wouldn't want to do that? that? Yeah, exactly. I, I could see the appeal <laughs> in that. Yeah. Oh, uh, fantastic! All right, so for my second best game of the year, uh, I'm gonna go with Vampire Survivors. 
That is a phenomenal game. Uh, it's also on Game Pass, although I didn't play it on Game Pass. I, I got it on Steam. It's like it was crazy. It came out for like a a dollar fifty, uh, literally less than two dollars. I think now they've increased it to like three bucks. But anyways, it, oh, it, no. it's very old school in looks. It looks like a 16-bit era Castlevania type game. Oh, okay. But the best way to describe it, it's a reverse bullet hell. So you pick like these different vampire hunter people and you're just running around the map and you get these upgrades. Like You literally can't do anything in the game except run and pick up upgrades. And then your dude is shooting a bunch of crap like like holy Bibles and fireballs and like <laughs> garlics and stuff like that. Just wait, wait, is, is your guy the Bible a vampire? Launcher? No, he's a or, vampire hunter. Okay, good. Okay. I was going to say, it might be pretty dangerous for a vampire to be thrown around. No, that, that's why you're throwing those bad Got boys it. around, you know? Got it. I, was thinking, I was imagining, like, some type of Bible launcher, like, like a bazooka <laughs> that's shooting out Bibles of some sort. No, they, they just kind of fly around. Your, like, they make, like, a protective aura. But it's it it just puts you it's, in a flow state. I, I know a few people in winter play it, and eventually you always die like it's it's a run based game i think whenever it hits 30 minutes like literally death comes out and kills you i don't know if you can escape death i haven't gotten to that point but you get so and some runs are just bad you know there's different types of enemies and all that kind of stuff but when you get the and then there's like these secret upgrades like if you upgrade one weapon to level five and another weapon to level five they join together and create like super mega holy bible and just like explodes everyone in the map um communion cracker mini gun. <laughs> oh my goodness but it, it's just it's it's crazy there's so much shit going on on the screen there's literally like thousands of creatures sp like swarming you uh it's just a lot of fun it's like the lowest barrier to entry you either get it on game pass or you drop like three bucks on it and apparently it just came out with dlc which is really good apparently they created like a new map where you can go to different environments and and like a castle or whatever i haven't played that specifically but it's just the easiest like pick up and play game super fun it's also like that kind of game that you can give to someone who doesn't really play games and they will immediately understand what's what's the fun like factor and how to play it uh it's definitely one of my most played games of the this year especially when i was driving from the west coast to the midwest whenever we we're stopping i'd just whip out the steam deck and play a little bit of vampire survivors and it always hit the spot so so that is the one for me all right malak are you ready to nominate your best game number one game of the year best um I'll go with uh, Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone alongside that, just because I've never played any Call of Duty games. Oh, wow. I did pick up Warzone and then Modern Warfare 2, because the game, it feels a lot more balanced. The gunplay is so much better than other Call of Duty games, and it really just shuts down like the streamer type of uh, movement text and and stuff so it's fun watching streamers go mad with like they try and run around the map uh, dodge bullets like neo and it just doesn't work because there's no outplay potential in the game and you just have to be good you have to position yourself and i think i think it's one of the best call of duty games fantastic that's my topic free and beard have you guys played modern warfare 2 no, i've seen i i know all about it i have not played it but every time i want to play a game like that i'll go play ut but um i see the huge appeal to it i like the fast paced kind of frenetic action um yeah bearded we also have a great community in winter um that's true yeah, yeah. Uh, and the campaign the is awesome games. Yeah. Except, except for that renegade guy. Yeah, no, that. <laughs> don't like that. That's true. Don't like that. Uh, I actually got Modern Warfare 2. I, I thought it was really good. Uh, I haven't played Warzone as much as I've just been playing the regular deathmatch modes. And very surprisingly, like, like the mode that I like the most, which is very random, but apparently it's actually more popular than they'd expected. They have now have a third-person mode. And this is going to be a throwback, okay. but... Uh, I loved playing SOCOM for the PlayStation 2. It was oh, yeah. like one of the first online games. And that was a third-person shooter. And the third-person mode in Warzone reminds me a lot of that because it becomes way more tactical. Because you can... 
like you, everyone can technically peek corners, right? Cause you're seeing from behind your guy's shoulder. So it's more like, it's a lot about positioning. You, you know, the choke points, you, you position yourself and your teammates in those. So it's a very different way to play call of duty. And, and I, I just, I play the regular modes when I play Warzone, and I really like DMZ, which is their new Warzone spin, but I always have myself coming back to third person mode for some reason. Uh, I've had, had a, a lot of fun playing that mode. Sweet. Well, Call of Duty is always a uh, is always a kind of well, not always. Maybe Vanguard wasn't that popular, but generally speaking, it tends to be a, a slam dunk. So good to see some representation for for COD here in our game of the year. All right, Bearded, you're up. Best game of Saint All Nicholas's right. Beard for 2022. It technically came out in 2021, but it saw a big. It saw no, it changed owners. It was purchased by another studio. And was it so? It's in 2022 that happened. I'll allow it. I'll allow it. <laughs> All right, there we go. That's that's my end. Is that it was purchased by a different studio in 2022, um, and that's Wordle. <laughs> no, no. Let me tell you. I uh, hold on reactions. a second. Set rank. Uh, what? <laughs> yeah. No. We're, all right. I know that we're going to Google that, like winter. Like, oh, they see a community for gamers. They come to this episode. Game of the year. World. We like, have world, crossword puzzles too, guys. Do you no. play Sudoku? Winner wants you. Like, <laughs> yeah. No, my actual number one is going to be Fall Guys, and I know it's because oh, okay, it came for it became free on Epic Games in 2022 in um, June or July. And, um, man, that is just such a good chill game. Um, and anytime it's I'm like free, a lot I'm of the games, free I'm, space while, while no. like, I don't know like, why what? <laughs> anyone who rages at fall guys, I'm just like, I don't get you because I play, I play all these stressful games that I'm like, Oh, it's down to the wire. Like a uh, freak grenade gets me over a building and I'm, freaking out and i can go into fall guys and i could lose every single match and i'm just like this is hilarious and and like <laughs> just like free that's exactly how he plays that game see i don't mind if somebody makes a good grenade throw and it blows me up or something like that or somebody yeah. shot combos me in unreal tournament that that's that's totally fine i'm like good shot what i don't like is how my guy like just falls on his ass for no apparent reason and it falls off the map and i have like no control over my character he's like Bleh. that's what i don't like it's it's a lack, oh, it's a lack of control Role. games oh, like man. the problem is i grew up with all of the the first person arena shooters right or yeah. before they were called arena just you know from doom quake unreal um all of that stuff right and with that you're it's extremely fast paced it's a very very skill based and there's an immense amount of control over it and how good you are is how much control you have and so that as my baseline Control is very important. I still play mm -hmm. NHL games, which require a crazy degree of control to be good at, etc. Fall Guys is kind of like if you added 50, like 50 times lag to any direction, <laughs> to all movements, to all jumping, Chef's and switch. added RNG knocking you off the map and just random like catastrophes. It's for like a control freak. You know, I played yeah. one game with awesome. I played more than one game, but I played one game with awesome sauce. And I was like, yeah. I'm done. And Ian was going <laughs> awesome sauce. Ian was going, oh, man, I can't wait to have free play this game. again." I'm like, I'm never playing that game ever again. It's because it's yeah, like, we're free for life. You know, sometimes you just got to roll with the punches. Oh, it's not even on my yeah. PlayStation. No, I deleted that game <laughs> almost immediately. Oh, um, and not because it wouldn't be fun, but because it was so like it was so stressful to not have the the control over my character and to have 50% of how well you do in that actually is more than that. 75% of how well you do in that game is totally randomized. That is not my type of game. Like imagine so, if Sudoku so, just randomly erased your numbers halfway through or whatever, like you would be irate. Imagine if you got halfway done with your crossword puzzle and it just reorganized itself and erased shit. And you're like, Oh, oh yeah. Well, you're like, Oh, it's fun. So like what I'm getting out of this is the next charity stream that winter clan does is gotta no. be Ben playing <laughs> fall guys of raging. We can hashtag it rage for charity or Perfect. it's going to be a solid, like 15 seconds rage of against cancer or something like that. <laughs> All right, free. But have you seen footage of people playing Fall Guys who actually know how to play the game? No, because I didn't want to watch footage of that There's game. There's so much control it. in there. No, there isn't. Yeah, there's, there, <laughs> there, there is. is actually people like they have the timing on all the all the little yeah. spinners and walls, and like they go they halfway like these... across the map because they know they will. I had a guy. Yeah, I had a guy. Yeah, you got to get on that Fall Guys play. 
glitch falling. Like he would he would jump at just the right time into a trap yeah. that would launch him across the map, and he'd uh-huh. be first one done. And then he's just sitting there screaming in my ear the whole time as I die. So I mean, that's I'm perfect ready. until the one yeah. guy who plays with him knows he's going to do that and just stands in front of him and pushes him off the ground and just makes him fall. And then he doesn't get to advance the next level. Yeah, like you have to outplay your enemies. <laughs> Your big fat <laughs> wobbly things that can't jump and slide off. The and technical like, term is, no... is bean. Is are, aren't they just yeah, like large bean. the beans? Yeah, the beans. you're bean. I didn't even give. Yeah, but I didn't. Same again with that Fall Guys lore, man. Yeah, same <laughs> as Rumbleverse. It's uh, it's a shame that it didn't make it in winter. Yeah. Like we had a nice community going, but. Just didn't work yeah. out. Fall Guys started off, yeah, to, right, to add on that, Fall Guys started off as a social game before we reached, we mm-hmm. re-standardized the way that we yeah. do onboarding of games, and then much later become became an official clan game. So, like, there was actually a lot of social uh, Fall Guys stuff at the beginning, just not when months, months later, when we actually decided to make it an official clan game and, it, and brought it back, then it had, like, half the audience. Yeah, I feel well, like Fall Guys it, is the perfect social game because it's free to play and it's yeah. so easy to pick up and just drop drop in. It's funny. It's everyone has yeah. laughs except for you. Full of them up. You know what? I will I will put an asterisk. The maps where um, like you're all standing and thing and it like balances and you don't go anywhere and you're trying to be the last one standing there. Those were okay. Those were kind yeah. of fun. And they're like it, they had a it was like Simon or whatever and you had to remember the different colors and stuff. Yeah. Like that was kind of fun. Because people lost based on their inability to think properly and remember stuff. And that was like kind of cool. However, when you're trying to go for a jump and some guy just like bumps into you randomly and you fall off the map, that was less cool. That was – Yeah. <laughs> my blood pressure went up by like 500%. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, on the coattails of that free, probably hopefully a game that doesn't make you rage as much, your number one game of 2022. It's really funny that you set that preface because this game totally made me rage. Um, but it's definitely, it definitely belongs in number one. Um, and that's from software's Elden ring. Um, so I have a love hate relationship with from, and, uh, you know, I started way back when, when they released the original demons, demons, souls, which I cringe every time I say that, cause I'm like, not English. I get it. Okay. Um, but loved it. And I platinum that game. And so I wanted to give Elden Ring a try. Uh, I really liked it. It's a game where you learn from your mistakes, like any from software game, but it's a game also where it has a fairly, even though it feels a little uh, floaty, I don't know what you want to call it. There's a, there's a very, you know, becoming precise at that and and learning the controls and having that skill level is what serves you well. And so that rinse and repeat tactic of, you know, you can't just charge into a room on the first, well, or the first couple of guys and just be like, Oh, I'm going to beat you guys to death. Um, And you can't go ahead and say like, Oh, I'm going to swing and then realize you missed or you swung too early. And then you press like, you know, defend, defend, defend. And you're like, get the shield up. You're like, it's too late. The timing and that kind of coordination is very very important and so i like that and also it's a beautiful game um it's just it's just it's very fun to me the only one i never liked from from was uh bloodborne and that's because i broke the game by doing something out of order and so yeah but i i break games all the time so uh that's that's kind of par for the course well the number one game for me is also elden ring that is definitely hey. the game that uh i've got two to, to. F- two to one to one Let's guys go. We win. oh yeah I, I, to my defense i i too think that in a general sense elden ring deserves to be game of the year all right i'm i'm it with does. you i understand the hype but i hate it with a passion <laughs> it's also a- demon souls all of those games i hate games because i don't play highly technical games i'm not good if there's a story, oh, so it's stressful like a, to you. Got it. Yeah. yeah, it's stressful to me. I I do have it. I, like I own Elden Ring on the computer, and I was going to play it on PC, and I, I probably spent an hour or so playing it before I was just like, I'm ready to chunk something, and I, I don't want to do this. Like I died so many times, and um and so I, I'm not there. If it if and they'll never do it because it's against their policy. But if it ever had like a story mode difficulty. I would all I'd be all for it. Like, let me go enjoy the game because it is a beautiful game, and I love like everything about it conceptually, except for playing it. <laughs> but I understand why everyone else loves it. What What to me was it was it's the 
definitely the quickest game I got to 100 hours ever. Uh, I platinum I platinumed Elden Ring. What I did, well, one, I I thought the transition because I played a lot of From Software games too. The transition to open world I thought was phenomenal because it, it. I played a night and I felt <laughs> as I was playing it, I was I was playing like the grotesque version of like King Arthur's Tales, like just exploring these messed up castles and going to all these different places the characters i thought were very memorable the places were very memorable and the story i thought it was nice because it, it it doesn't hit you in the face like a lot of games do so you can kind of create your own narrative but the the elements are there but from like a meme slash like fun perspective it was crazy how much elden ring had just public opinion in a chokehold my friends who don't play video games or just are the standard, like, I will buy Call of Duty and FIFA and NFL every year, they were buying Elden Rings. And it was generating these moments of incredible joy to me where this guy texts me, like, I came out of the tomb and this homie told me I got no maiden, so I just killed him. And, like, they're just breaking <laughs> the game because, like, they're not used to that st- kind of stuff. Uh, so it was just really funny. And, like, you're almost, and even then, even though it's, an, it's a From Software game and it's hard, it also added a lot of accessibility options in the sense that you can summon any of your buddies at any, like if you're super frustrated by a boss or a monster or whatever, you can kind of summon your friends. And we actually did that with a few winter buddies. It, it was kind of cool to shepherd people that were early in the game through bosses. So it created the sense of community that I thought was, was unparalleled. So I, I always love from software games, but to me, they always, I enjoyed them, but they didn't hit that like magnum opus. And I think, Elden Ring just just really brought it all together and for their transition open world to me it felt like Breath of the Wild uh, but it, it it reminded me a lot of Breath of the Wild but if Breath of the Wild to me the breakable weapons always pissed me off specifically about Breath of the Wild but it just seemed like what if Breath of the Wild was really fucked up and scary like to me that's what Elden Ring is <laughs> I mean, it's funny. I was going to mention, uh, yeah, Breath of the Wild too for a comparison, but for a different reason. Um, the thing that I really liked about Elden Ring too, and it's really more of like a state of gaming 2023 where we're at right now, right? Um, I'm all for indie games, but there have never been, there's never been a time in the history of the planet where there have been more games from all different there's there's never been more games that are more accessible that are more like easier to develop and and deploy than now so like you're it's a you know it's a wonderful market if you're looking for any sort of game that you want to play but it also means that people are so spread out so the triple a titles the real triple a titles and that's why i was gonna mention breath of the wild um and the elden ring they it's riskier for the studios to go ahead and produce something like this because it's fighting amongst so much competition. You're getting so much smaller a piece of the pie. How do you get steal the attention from all of these other games into, into this? And it's frustrated me to no end because um, when there are fewer uh, games being released, I think the bar has to go up. And so the AAA title bar right now, there's only a couple games that are really doing those really outstanding games. And, and Elden Ring is absolutely one of those, you know, um, and, and that's one of the reasons why I, I, I super like that in particular. This bathtub scrubber simulator 2022 has got to fucking go. Uh, what is a power washer? Is it power you know, washer simulator? No, a bunch of people put no. that in their top ten games of the year was power wash simulator. Right, I'm sh- I'm yeah. sure it is really relaxing, and maybe it gets your ASMR tinglies or going off or what I don't know. But it prevents you from from playing a better game that didn't get developed because some developer was too scared that they weren't going to have a market share. And I'm like, this the game doesn't itself suck, but it sucks away from the other games that would have been better than that. And, um, I mean, maybe I'm just old now. I got a lot of silver in my beard, whatever, but old the man glory at cloud. <laughs> yeah, right. ah! Um, no, the glory I, I think, days. Go ahead. Sorry. I think that's super interesting. I think we could even maybe to kick off 2023, we could do a state of gaming episode, talk about like what trends do we hope to see in 2023 and what trends do we hope yeah. to leave behind, uh, I think I think we could do a full podcast because that's that's super interesting and super relevant, especially for a community of like ours that wants to foster new games and keep these communities excited and alive. Uh, I think a lot of that makes a lot of sense. Yep. All right, so we're gonna this wraps up our game of the year sesh uh, to wrap up. All right, block count it, count it out for us your top three games of the year. So Overwatch two, 
Um, next, I say God of War Ragnarok and obviously Modern Warfare 2 along with War- Warzone 2. Fantastic. Bearded, your list? Uh, mine was Horizon Forbidden West, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, and then Fall Guys. Free. NHL 23, Rumbleverse, and then Elden Ring. Fantastic. And for me, it was Pentiment, Vampire Survivors, and also Elden Ring. Ipso facto, Elden Ring is the Winter Clan Game of the Year, obviously. So congratulations, Elden Ring. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I thought we were going to go ahead and pick the... We're going to do the top three. That were going to be the best games that were released over the year. And then we're going to pick the best three games for winner. No, no. The I, year that I, I, was I was saying that this this was our official voting. No, I, I, was, I was totally kidding. Because yeah. now we move on to our next section, which is the Winter Clan Game of the Year. So in this section, yeah. well, we're, we're only going to pick one game that was our Winter Game of the Year. It doesn't have to be a game that was released this year. It could have been released uh, 20 years ago. Unfortunately, it can't be UT. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. What a jerk. Um, but yeah, basically any game, it could be any game that you had the most fun or thought was mo- most important for you as a member of the winter clan community. We're now going to swap it around the order just to, just to throw a little razzle dazzle at the crowd. So I'll start with my winter clan game of the year. And it is of course, Fortnite zero build mode. <laughs> I had, uh, and I know it's Mimi, but I actually mean it. Uh, To me, it was, uh, I had a ton of fun playing Fortnite. I shat on Fortnite a lot years, years ago, and... I Did you just poly- say shat on fart night? Because I'm almost yeah. pot. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. That was so great. We got, so we got char t- <laughs> shat on fart night. There we go. We're, we're, we're just on a roll. Video. Cut that. Yeah. Cut that. <laughs> <laughs> but jokes aside, uh, I hated a lot on Fortnite. I apologize to the Fortnite community at large. Uh, but just had a lot of fun. It, the, the game just feels very polished from a game. I, I said that in other in other podcast episodes, but playing it just feels good. The weapons just feel good. Sound feels good. I read that they have in a, a new up, a graphical update that just came out that makes it look gorgeous. I haven't had a chance to try it out. And, and it's just fun having all these different characters, like playing the Xenomorph from Aliens against Goku doing the gritty against Thanos. Like that's that's just funny. And then John Cena comes out of nowhere and like 360 no scopes you, you know, like that just it's it's fun. And then like we would always take screenshots when we got Victory Royale with the crew and it's like Darth Vader and like Naruto or whatever. So it just feels like a really easy game. Again, I mentioned that about uh, Fall Guys, but it's. I played a lot of Warzone and all those other games, and Battle Royales are stressful. Uh, it's a lot yeah. of pressure. You're afraid you're going to lose. And there's a little bit of that in Fortnite. You don't want to just completely like let your team down. But it's the it's the least, it's the most zen out of all of us, well, out of all of those. When I play Fortnite, I'm not stressed out. I'm just kind of hanging out, having some laughs with the crew, and like shooting the shit. So because of that, Fortnite Zero Build is my game of the year for Winter Clan. Okay. Free, you're up. Okay. Uh, so this one's really tough because I I came up with three, but two of them are really tied. And I don't think anybody else is going to say these ones. So for Winter Clan, I think Enlisted and the Paradox Suite are pretty much tied for um, importance and also like uh, popularity or success. We'll call it success uh, in Winter. So the Paradox game stuff, is all of the you know the strategy games that had never been in winter before, and we're not talking about like the real time strategy games like StarCraft. We've had that, um, but these more complicated Can um, the Kings, Hearts of Iron. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right, that that whole grouping. Right. Um, so I would say that that was that was something that we tried in 2022, uh, and was very very successful, uh, mm-hmm. especially in the earlier part of the year when it was kind of new, and then of course enlisted. Um, has been incredibly successful and is, is now our second most popular game behind Destiny and has been. Yeah, good job to the recruiters, or I should say recruiter. Um, <laughs> yeah. doing a yeah. really good job of spending Arkan. his entire life. Shout out, um, Arkin. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, but but I, I, as a first-person shooter game that I hadn't paid much attention to it, I never thought it would be you know second to Destiny. That's a that's a monumental effort by Archon, and uh, and obviously it's a it's a big staple in winter now. So yeah. it's a dope game. If I, 
Uh, I if I could some... jump in here, go ahead, go ahead. My, my, my pick was going to be enlisted. And, and I actually, I remember back when I was uh, still in the Apex Legends leadership team, um, it was actually Phenumbrous. He was talking in, in the Apex leadership chat and he was like, hey, have you tried this enlisted game? And I downloaded it, gave it like a 20 second look over and was like, nah, this isn't for me. And, and then it, that was over a year ago. And then bring in, then Archon brings in, Hey, can we get, try to get this going? And I've re-downloaded it and I start playing it and get into it. And it is an amazing game, especially when you have a great group of people to play with. And, um, it's been phenomenal, like you say, statistics wise in the game. I mean, we got a we got a growing community. Um, they have every intention of trying to take on Destiny for that top spot and winner. And um, <laughs> I think that's uh, Archon's goal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, Diesel it, Diesel had a similar goal, I think, for uh, yeah, for the Paradox games too, a while ago before he switched jobs and became a little bit busier. But I know a lot of people are hunting, would love to hunt for the for that number one spot and take Get Destiny it. down a step. Yeah. Controversial opinion. So, there, there are a lot of better games out there than Destiny 2, so let's get that spot. There's going to be 4,000 <laughs> angry comments below. 4,000. Let's see cut it, that, guys. Cut that. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, actually, I had the exact same experience as you, Bearded, just different people. I remember downloading Enlisted maybe a year or two ago. It, I jumped on a map. That, it was so large, and there was so much going on. I remember like, I ran like for five minutes, got headshotted, died. And I'm like, I don't want to do this again. So I uninstalled. And then I was just hanging out in gen chat. And as we said, Arkin just does a good job of galvanizing people to kind of jump on. So like, all right, I'll try this out. And it was awesome. It, it was, I remember in my, in the heyday, one of the games that I played online that made the most lasting impression on me was just playing nine, battlefield 1945 or 1942 or whatever the year, the first battlefield. And I was just blown away at the time, like how the graphics were awesome and how people were driving vehicles and there was so much going on. And mm -hmm. unless that kind of gave me that feeling again in 2022, uh, 15 or 20 years after battlefield came out in that way. So awesome game, awesome community. And it's, it's been growing a lot. So yeah, definitely can definitely see that. Bearded, your turn. Well, I, I jumped in. in oh, you're, 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 you're enlisted. enlisted too. Too. It's it's officially enlisted. Yeah. yeah. I, I thought yeah. you said you were going to, but the, okay, I got you. I got you. No, 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 no. It's Mlock now. All right, Mlock. So I do feel obligated to go with Dead by Daylight, but the game is just so frustrating <laughs> at times, and the times are not uncommon. So I can't really give it like my top pick. Um, just for the community, I'll go with Overwatch because yeah. I've spent. Loads I saw that come in a mile away. Yeah, I was yeah. waiting for it. I mean, yeah, I sort of got you off. I was gonna say in Overwatch too. I mean, so many people from mm -hmm. Frenzy and that entire group of people, right, have been waiting for Overwatch two for a long time. And Overwatch was such a staple for winter for a very, very long time, yeah. and still, you know, is. Um, but when Overwatch two came out, we just saw that giant jump back up, and Overwatch mm -hmm. catapulted to like the third or fourth most popular game in winter, which, you know, with the exception of destiny and enlisted, which is a little bit here, the third, fourth, fifth, six, seven spots are always like very, very neck and neck. There's like D and D and then there's overwatch two and there's apex legends and there there's modern warfare. There's some other call of duty. Those are all, I feel like I'm missing one of the major ones right now, but either way, like there's, those are all right there. So sorry, Valorant, sorry to cut you off. What? Valorant. No, I think he uh, Valorant was. <laughs> yeah, Val Valorant's always kind of a little low performing or hangs out in the middle. It oh. kind of hangs out in the middle. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's a whole there's a whole group of those that that Monster Hunter World or Monster Hunter Rise, Rise. series. Any yeah, of those yeah. games, they're all kind of around in there. Um, but but anyhow, yeah. Sorry to cut you off there. I was just gonna say Overwatch Two really catapulted back up, and it was nice to see. So yeah, I can definitely see it. There's loads of new people, but great community. Love them all. Yeah, the, the leaders at Overwatch are awesome, and, and just the community. I, I already said that before. Just great crew to play with, mm -hmm. and it's such an easy game for people to rage and be toxic. And the community has just completely nipped that in the bud and and made it a super constructive and fun place to just jump on and, and play some games. So, so oh, don't good. get me wrong. It's uh, there's a lot of banter, a lot of salt, but. It's oh, always it's, it's different when there's some like nice bands and when people are actually getting like their jimmies rustled for realsies though. 
Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, I, uh, I'm blanking on his name. What's the German dude in winter? That's really good. Flunks, dude. Oh, cryptical. Flunks. Cryptical. Yeah, I was like, uh, I was just blanking on his name or whatever. Fr- Isn't he German? I didn't know he was not, German. I, don't, I, don't I thought think he was he's German. German. Cryptical. Let us know in the comments. Um, <laughs> he's <laughs> like, I'm Australian, mate. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> German, but I don't know. He's he's in the EU. I'm from New Jersey, dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. But he is good. I, I imagine playing against him repeatedly would cause you to be quite toxic. So, and I bet you on a daily basis he gets quite a bit yeah. of. of you know, chat. So for sure, uh, he doesn't really show up uh, to what? events and tournaments. No, he's not very active in the community. He's uh, in XP chat from time to time. But oh, he's, he's, he used to be real. I mean, I think he's, he he's a legend. To, yeah. He was yeah. he was more yeah. active, but he is good in any first person shooter he's that, is, that you can get him in. I mean, you play doesn't want to play UT with us anymore. Yeah, <laughs> oh, he was at UT too. He was good. He was good. He and he and Frenzy are around the same skill level. Um, he's got a nasty snipe, but I think his biggest issue is that um, the speed in UT. So just because you have really ridiculously good aim or whatever, the people, the competition that you go up against, they're really good at that, and they have really good map knowledge, and they have really good movement. And so, you know, and if you're like, well, I like the sniper rifle, well, you can't play Unreal Tournament with only one weapon. You'll get annihilated. Yeah. So cool. Well, there you have it, folks. Our winter games of the year for Tommy Vodka. You got Fortnite for free. We got Enlisted and the Paradox suite of games. I actually I need to jump on the Paradox multi. I love those games. I played a lot of Crusader Kings. Love just. I was gonna say killing babies in that game before they turn kings, but that's probably not not appropriate for the for the <laughs> <Yeah>. chat. <laughs> Bearded also with Enlisted and Locke with Overwatch 2. Great picks, everyone. Congratulations to the to the winter games of the year, everyone. All right, to wrap us to wrap the episode up, we'll talk about our most anticipated game of the year. Let's keep it to our top one most anticipated game for for 2023. And just to switch it up again, Bearded, why don't you kick us off here? Yeah, uh, for me, it's going to be uh, Legend of Zelda: Tears of the Kingdom. Um, I've, I mean, Breath of the Wild was such an iconic uh, Switch release, and I've been waiting on the follow up that. And it, everything that they've released so, so far has just been, I mean, it just gives me chills waiting to play that game. Great game. It, FBOs so- approved. Stamp of approval from Robbie. Yeah, I, I love Breath of the Wild. I hope they remove weapon durability, but it'll probably stay. My question is, do you think they're going to announce a new Switch soon? Because I've, I've heard a lot that the newer games have been struggling. I heard Xenoblade had frame issues, yeah. Bayonetta 3, uh, Pokemon, but I don't know Pokemon. if that's a Switch or if it, that's just a game freak just kind of saying, oh, we, we make a lot of money, so we don't have to. But anyways, I wonder if like for Breath of the Wild, they're po- probably pushing the console even further. Yeah. I wonder if there's going to be like a joint announcement, like Breath of the uh, Tears of the Kingdom. It will be Switch One and Switch Two compatible. Yay! Yeah. Hey. All the rumor. If you watch any of the YouTubers that follow this kind of stuff, they're going to show you that the cycle of of when they do upgrades. This would be the year for either an upgrade or a new comp version of the console of some sort. Cause it was, it's basically like every two years you get some kind of hardware first, second year it was the switch light. And then on year four, it was the OLED um, version. So now we're on year six. And so it would, it seems like it's in the pattern of us getting some type of new switch hardware, but who, who knows if that's just going to be some other variant with a different processor, or if it's going to be like a whole new switch 2.0 kind of thing. Um, you know, uh, but I expect it might be come around with the with the release of Zelda. We might hear something um, as yeah. far as that goes. And I remember I actually got Breath of the Wild originally for the Wii U because I didn't have a Switch at the time, but I didn't want to wait mm-hmm. to play Zelda. So that was a cross class generation platform game. So, but yeah, that should be cool. I'm super excited for that too. All right, Pre, you're up. I'm doing a mm. zigzag pattern here. Yeah, I was like, I didn't expect me to go next. <laughs> no, Diablo Four, hands down. So it's been uh, it's been a game. I played all the Diablos. I beat all the Diablos. Uh, I remember when when Diablo three added the randomization. Uh, so you well pseudo randomization of the dungeons and whatever. So you get unique stuff every single time. And I thought that was really cool. It was really attractive. Still not as good as Dun- uh, Diablo two, but um, in my opinion, but uh, Diablo four is going to take the cake. And I think Diablo four is also going to 
it's definitely gonna become a winter clan game i'm calling it right now but i think you'll see some people come out of the uh the woodworks i think uh laura Quash will show up for that Love so you'll that. see him okay. being active again i'm telling you he played diablo 3 with us quite a bit uh okay. i'm wondering too is i'm wondering if um uh, if Tyler, aka Dad, did, 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 comes back uh, because he played a lot of Diablo three with us, uh, so yeah, Diablo four for sure. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Diablo is probably also one of the most. I played Diablo one probably when I was too young to be allowed to play that game, but I love. I played that with my <laughs> older brother. Love that, and I'm I'm just I'm agree. I agree with you, Free. I prefer Diablo two over Diablo three. But when Diablo two Resurrected came back. I had a ton of fun, but I was kind of missing the gameplay of Diablo 3 because it was very dynamic, like the abilities mm-hmm. jumping around and stuff like that. It's, it's a nostalgia of exactly. how iconic Diablo 2 was at the time versus how iconic Diablo 3 was at the time. Exactly. Right? But it's I like not... the mood of Diablo 2 and the world. Like it just felt darker. Like Diablo 3 mm-hmm. felt a yeah. little bit wowified. So Diablo 4 seems to hit the sweet spot where the the mood and every everything I've seen about it, it seems to call back to Diablo 2. It's very grim dark and you know macabre and all that stuff but the gameplay seems seems fresh so i'm excited for that for sure all right malak last well second to last your most anticipated game of 2023 all right so i actually had three picked out but since you said one i'll go with the uh, company of heroes three. Oh, nice because on one and two i've spent Upwards of like uh, 1,200 hours combined. And Jesus. That's a lot of playing. Yeah. That's a lot of playing. Do so you yeah, prefer I'm one really or two? Forward to two. Okay. Just yeah. because uh, the player base is a lot more active. I don't. I didn't expect to hear Company of Heroes three here. I played a decent amount. Definitely not not that many hours. But I remember back uh, back home, my buddies and I would play Company of Heroes one on uh, via LAN. And it was always a good time. It it just felt very new for the RTS genre. Uh, just the yeah. way you you play is very different from a Warcraft three or a Starcraft either. Uh, so those those are awesome games. They uh, I like them a lot. Do you want to do you want to name drop the other two you had in mind? So it was Evil Dead the game from Ash and the Evil Dead. Isn't that out already? Uh, no, it's supposed to be out twenty twenty three. Okay. And then it was Payday 3. Oh, shit. I didn't know Payday 3 was coming up. I played a lot I of Payday didn't 2. Either. That but, was a fun game. Yeah. That's the it's better Destiny because you still play like dungeon type. I don't know. Games. I was thinking of the candy bar. I was like. Payday the heist at your bank. Ro- oh, I thought you were. I thought you were for realsies there for a second. <laughs> uh, I haven't had lunch yet. <laughs> So my most anticipated game for 2023 is Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, Okay. Baldur's Gate 1 was the first big boy RPG I ever played. And it just blew my mind. Like I remember, I remember like in Baldur's Gate 1, when you go into the mines, it's like the first dungeon and the ability, I was blown, like my mind was blown that you could kill a shopkeeper and just loot all his items. Like, how is it possible to have so much freedom in a video game? Like, it was crazy. Like the amount of things you could do, the way you could interact with the world. So I know it's already out on early access, but I actually don't want to touch it because I just want to feel it. And it's like, I want to play it in its final form and not have to wait. So I'm holding off. It's coming out supposedly in August. Uh, it's made with Valerian, which are the guys that made Divinity Original Sin. Those are fantastic games. Uh, I mm-hmm. never played the first one. Actually. I only played the second one. One of the best uh, CRPGs out there. So I have a lot of trust in them. Uh, I love the Baldur's Gate brand. And I think they're going to... It's been dormant for a very long time. And there's been offshoots. There was a terrible game mm-hmm. that came out on Game Pass, which was uh, The Dark Alliance, which actually used to be really fun games. And the I think PS2 or PS3 or maybe PS2 era, but yeah, Baldur's Gate 3 just seems to be going in the right direction for a super beloved franchise for me. And then shout out to my fiance. I actually bought it for me for, for my birthday as a pre-order Hogwarts legacy. Uh, super excited about that game. I love Harry Potter. And one of my favorite games of all time is bully. I don't know if people remember that game, but it's, I remember bully. It's an awesome game. It's rockstar. It's basically 
Grand Theft Auto, but if you were living in a boarding school and like it was, it, it, it was just like really fun. Like you could skip class, but you you could like do all these shenanigans in the school. And Hogwarts Legacy, the trailers that I've seen, kind of seems like it's that, but in Hogwarts, which sounds yeah. They said you could torture stu- your fellow yep. students with the with the deadly go. curse. Uh, so stuff. call me sold. I can torture <laughs> people. <laughs> I, I was gonna mention yeah, it as it's a, like uh, you can be mentioned. evil in that game. Like it's it's an option. To, oh, let me buy the collector's edition here. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Uh, I was going to say Baldur's Gate 3 I could see that potentially coming in as a clan game because we already have a bunch of those types of fans um, uh, especially playing um, oh, it lost me right now um, but there is a, there's a group of players that keep recommending the game for us to do and we can never get the votes for it and I had it when you were talking about Divinity? It. No not Divinity um Anyways, it's a similar style to Baldur's Gate 3, but I think a lot of those are, could convert over to Baldur's Gate when it comes out. And I could see it happen, making a run at a clean game. It's, it's that same group of people that really like the Diablo series, whatever. There's a yeah. lot of overlap in that group. Both Tyler and, and uh, uh, JC would yeah. be all about that. Yeah, and, and Divinity Original Sin 2, they have a multiplayer mode, which is uh, I play a lot of IRL Dungeons & Dragons, and the closest experience to that I've had in a video game was the multiplayer mode of Divinity Original Sin because everyone creates their characters. They can you can collaborate when you're having a dialogue with an NPC. You can pick different choices. So mm-hmm. hopefully they bring they will bring co op. I know to Baldur's Gate three, yeah. and I trust that they'll bring those chops to to that too. So so a lot a lot to look. I mean, there's a lot of really good games. I we had to keep it to one, but I was looking at a, I made a little short list like Resident Evil four remake. Resident Evil four is mm-hmm. my favorite. Resident Evil uh, Starfield. What's gonna come out? I'm super excited for that. Um, Jedi Survivor is, I think that's gonna be really cool. Hopefully, they have uh, more options for your guy except ponchos. I don't know if you guys played the first Jedi Fallen Order. Homie only wore ponchos. That was the only like item in the game. Kind of weird, but still a good game. Uh, but I think 20. I think we talked about this free in one of our other episodes. I think 2022 is actually the delayed consequence of everything, of all the shortcomings of COVID. A lot yep. of the, it took a while for that to hit, right? Games take years to develop yep. the, all that I think came to a head in 2022. It was a relatively small year in terms of new releases. And a lot of things were pushed back, like historically pushed back. So I think in 2023, we're going to hopefully see a return to form, especially in the triple A industry, because mm-hmm. a lot of triple A games got pushed back. So yeah. I think we're gonna have we're gonna have a pretty exciting 2023. Yeah, absolutely. Did you remember the name of it? By the way, I thought for a split second. Yeah, Path, Scott, Path of Exile. Path of, Path of Exile. Exile. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We, we have we have several Path of Exile players, and we've tried to bring it in as a clan game once or twice. Put it up for a vote, and uh, it, it, it never. It's like right there on the cusp. Like it needs. We need like five or ten more Path of Exile players for it to really come in and be effective. Um, but it, yeah, those will convert over to Baldur's Gate three really easy. Yeah, Path of Exile is really good. It's it's kind of like a Diablo clone, but it's kind of yep. turned. Mm-hmm transform into its own thing people go super into the min maxing elements of diablo there i never played it much i remember i downloaded once and went into the talent tree and like i i had to zoom out like so much from oh, yeah, the talent do. tree because it's so huge it was like yeah, literally big. maybe thousands of options it was no, insane you when you play path of exile you have to have a build pre-selected before you ever start a character um, and there's like a, there's this extension you can download called Path of Builder, and it will help you plan out your stuff. I, I, when I was in the Path of Exile, I had it all worked out, and you're like, you know, see exactly. right there, theory crafting, just yeah, like oh, yeah. numbers yeah. Love and, and, and every and every season. But the thing too is, it's like you basically play the game over and over and over again. It's just every season they change a few things in the stats and builds and and the perks. And so what worked one season might not work the next season. Even though you're playing through the same story mode, basically. And yeah, Diablo is the same way. Fun. Although they created adventure mode in Diablo three, which I thought was yeah. was really nice. Well, that does it, folks. That was our game of the year edition. Let's do a quick recap of everything we said again. So uh, I'll start with with my top three games of the year. I had Pentiment number three. I had Vampire Survivors number two. I had Elden Ring number one. Free, do you want to hit us? With, oh, and then I'll do my. Uh, Winter game of the year was Fortnite, zero build mode, fantastic game. And most anticipated game of the year was, uh, for the next year, is Baldur's Gate 3. Free, do you want to hit us with, with your list? Yeah, it was NHL 22, 
or sorry, NHL 23. Uh, it was Rumbleverse and it was uh, Elden Ring for my favorites, whatever, for this year. For winner, it was a tie between Enlisted and Paradox games. Um, mm-hmm. Yep. Most anticipated? Oh. Uh, most anticipated was Diablo 4. Great. Bearded? Uh, my three was um, Horizon Forbidden West. It was Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, and it was Fall Guys. My clan game of the year for Winter Clan was Enlisted, and most anticipated was Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Fantastic. Mlock? So mine were Overwatch 2, God of War Ragnarok, and Modern Warfare 2, along with Warzone. Um, for, for Winter, I said Overwatch 2 again and for 2023 it was company of heroes three great not a lot of overlap that's we got some really different uh perspectives here which i love but there you have it folks this wraps up 2022 for our winter clan roundtable podcast it's been awesome kicking this off this year and it's been a pretty tumultuous time here for me as your host because of the move and a lot going on so 2023 we hope to keep it in a much more consistent basis there uh so a lot of cool episodes we're gonna take other deep dives into the winter lore we want to do a little bit of a winter clan like irl history and a lot of other things we want to do throughout the year so thanks for tuning in this year hope to see all of you next year as well Happy holidays, have a fantastic New Year's, and this is it for our Winter Clan Roundtable Podcast for 2022. Stay frosty, everyone.